Hello guys, you're welcome once again to my channel and in this video, I am going to continue a series I started and then I stopped the series uh, for a couple of reasons and we're also going to talk about those reasons in this video. Alright, so um, the series I'm talking about is this React Native series where we were going to build a mobile application and we're going to be using React Native to do this, okay? So we're going to build a mobile application with React Native. And um, basically, um, this mobile application was going to consume the same API we used for this series here, all right? So it was going to consume the same API we used for this contact manager series, all right? The reasons why I didn't do the series, first up was um, I built this using class-based components and then I realized, hey, a lot of persons were more interested in hooks than in class-based components. And um, basically the React Native Corp or the React Corp is shifting away from class-based components into hooks. So I decided to redo the video with hooks. Uh, the second reason also was because React Navigation 5 was out and um, I also needed to redo the application to stand with React Navigation 5. And then the third reason also was because when I did the application, I basically just focused on Android and left out um, iOS. So, but this time around, I worked on both the Android version and the iOS version side by side. And uh, during the course of this video, we are going to definitely see how we can do things like this all right so uh right now i have the the application here yes and uh, i have the api set up uh api okay yes so here's the api um also let me just get back here all right so here i have my android emulator and my ios um, simulator so here's the application here uh let me just get this up all right so for some of you guys who may not want to use this api all right so um, before the next video, what I want to do is I'm going to host um, the API on Heroku, all right? Uh, the only problem may be when coming to files and I really don't want to use AWS S3 being that this is going to be sort of like a, a, a sort of like say um, a file cloud storage that is going to be accessed by as many persons that watch this video. So I'm going to be sticking with Heroku because Heroku deletes files after some time. So while you're going through this video, if you really are not interested in having to set up the API on your local machine, you can just refer to the Heroku um, basically URL for your API. And then uh, you should also have that in mind that after some time, Heroku automatically deletes those files. I'm also going to be dropping the link to the API repo if you want to set up the API locally or if you want to host the API yourself. Okay, so now that is a lot of talking. Now let's get into it. So um, basically here is our React Native for iOS. So you can see the splash screen and um, the splash screen does not display any white screen. It just after the splash screen straight up comes the application. And this is for Android. So if I click on this, right, you can see here that we have our splash screen. I know this icon doesn't look so good. All right. So then it shows our loading screen and then it loads this because we are not authenticated. So I'm going to be using the iOS simulator most of the time because it's a lot faster than the Android simulator. All right. So now let me log in. Uh, let me see if I let me log in. All right. Uh, you also notice that once I start typing here and I get rid of this, you see this button is disabled and then this text input starts to show red. Okay. So let me just get that in here and log in. And you can see it tells me invalid email or password. All right. Let me get in a correct password. Let me correct email or something. All uh, right. Log in, invalid email or password. Okay. Let me just check my database. All right. Um, so contact manager, let's go to users. And for our users, we have Apple Franklin to gmail.com. Yes. All right. So let me, let me see. My passwords are always password. Yes. Okay. So right now we have logged in successfully. Um, you can also see here that uh, right here, we can add a new contact. Now, once I just get my text input, you can see here, it tells us that this field is required. All right. So, um, I can't access this button unless I do all this. I think the only option I feel here is this file here. So let me just add a new contact. Let's call this Manifera. All right. Uh, last name is Manifera. Or let's call this um, Bondela. All right. So Bondela. And the email is going to be bondela at gmail.com. And uh, for the phone number, we can basically select any country. All right. So we can select, say, of course, I put Nigeria as a default because I am from Nigeria. All right. But we could select any nation and it will automatically filter that for us based on the particular country, right? So let me just go back to my dear Nigeria. Uh, I didn't type big, all right, so let's see Nigeria, yes. All right, so now it clears the input, so I can just 
get my phone number in here. And yep, you can see my phone number, my email, my name and all that. So um, if I save this contact right now, you can see contact saved successfully um, without an image. If I go to view contacts here, you're going to see this guy I just added right now, which is Monifera Bondela, the phone number and the email address. So I'll just head back here and uh, all right, let's just come back in here. And now um, if I go on to uh, see, let's see, if I go on to contact me, Right, you're going to see this contact here, and um, you can see that I basically I can text this guy. I can send him a text message. All right, um, yeah, I can send him a text message. I can call him and all that. Okay, so I can send him a text message. I can call him. I can send him a mail. And yes, his phone number, his email, his name, and then his profile picture. So I can just get back here, and now I can edit this guy, change this guy details, so is everything is pulled out. Um, also, I can basically just put to refresh. Um, I can search for a contact. So if I type an M, you can see here that it brings this guy for us. All right. I can also delete this contact too. So delete any ask me sure you want to delete this and I OK. And contact deleted successfully and this guy no longer exists in the game. Also, if there are more than enough contacts here, I can put to refresh. Uh, let me see. Let me log out from this user. And I'm going to make use of a contact that has a lot of users here. And that would be desmond at gmail.com. So I'm going to log in. And uh, if I go over to view contacts, all right, so you can see here that Desmond has a whole bunch of contacts. So if I scroll down, you can see we have an uh, infinite scroll. And that should be just about the end of all his contacts. And also, the really cool part about this is that. Um, the applications are tailored for to look native on both Android and iOS, all right? So if I were to check this out on Android, uh, let me log in as this month, right? At gmail.com. And then password is always password. And now if I log in right now, um, yes, so, all right, so right now we are logged in. If I were to go over to view in his contacts, you can see also that there's a skeleton text here that shows trying to load when the contacts are trying to load. All right, so but on iOS it was really fast, so I couldn't talk about that. So you can see how this uh, actually looks. It looks um, pull to refresh. You can see this. Let's see on iOS. You can see this the modal that pops up. While if I come over here, you can see how this looks native for iOS. All right, so if I went to contact me, you can see the skeleton text too that shows up, and then the contact. So you can see. All right, and the search. All right, so that's just about that for this video, just basically introducing the context of this video. So starting off from the next video, we are going to um, start up by creating our React Native application. And like I said, I'm going to be dropping a link to the repository for the source code of this React Native application, as well as the source code for the API on my GitHub repo. And then um, from the next video, I'm going to ensure that the API is hosted on the Heroku so that you can basically, if you're not interested in having the API set up on your machine, you can just pull it up from the server where it is. All right. So before I end this video, I just want to make one more statement here. Uh, please subscribe to my channel. All right. Like this video, share, drop your comments and see you next time.